Okay, so up here on the board, while you were working on kind of cleaning up your brain, getting some of that pee meter off, those extra vessels, so you can see those external structures really well, I was working pretty hard to try to um, get... Uh, what, Okay, get the dura. This is a different brain. It had the dura mater on it, a really tough connective tissue. See this? Um, that was connected to the brain. Very tough stuff that I had to cut off the whole thing. And it has the pituitary gland still attached, which is why I was trying so hard to keep it there so you could see the actual pituitary gland. It's so easy to pull off. <laughs> I've almost ruined it. But I want to show you a couple things. So here you can see some really nice, big, fat, if I turn it on the side, um, olfactory bulbs. You see those? Yeah, they're really big. And you know what is really cool about that? This structure here, this is part of the nasal cavity. So all that folding, this is extra surface area inside the nasal cavity. See this? That's where the olfactory bulbs were sitting. This is literally the cribiform plate of the sheep. So they're sitting inside these little pockets. So this is your Christogalia up in here. And then all the folding inside, you can see that, that surface area is so that the sheep has, they have really good sense of smell. The more folding, the more nerve endings, the more you're able to sense the chemicals that are in the air. But this is kind of cool because you can see where those olfactory bulbs sit in your nasal cavity. Um, the other thing about this guy, okay, come into focus, you can do it, okay. It was, it was taking me a while to get to it and I can't get the upper top surface of the dura mater off the pituitary, pituitary gland without ripping the pituitary gland off. Um, but you can see, okay, here's our, here's our little gland can it's lifted off so it sits on top of that mammillary body. And let's see if I can do this without ripping the infundibulum. See? It's kind of hard to see. You also have a nerve attached to it. The infundibulum is right here, and it's this little tiny stalk that connects the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. Okay? So... If you see a pituitary gland on the quiz, it's going to look a lot like this, okay? Um, it's the best I could do with the dura mater ooh, kind of being a pain in the rear. So if we're looking kind of at a front view, just tilting it forward, you see that little, it's like a little tube right here. See that? I know it's hard to see. Okay, hold on. I'm going to break it. I know I'm going to break it. In the middle, you see that little, oh, focus, 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 focus. There. Right in the middle, it's like a little tube or whatever, this structure. That's your infundibulum, okay? Um, but yours, it will just look like a little hole where the infundibulum was. It's really hard to preserve it in the pituitary gland, unless you're being super careful, and I'm not skilled enough for that, okay? Um, so I just wanted to show you that, show you what the dura mater looked like, show you the cribriform plate and those really big old factory bulbs and kind of where the pituitary gland sits. It's, it's very protected. Okay. Um, so now, who would like to volunteer their brain for the internal structures? All right, bring it up. <coughs> bring it down. All right, so the other structures that are on our list. Ooh, this is nice. You guys did a good job cleaning. Look at that. They even have a little bit of the optic nerve. Well, that part's falling off. So you have your optic chiasm, optic tracts. This one, even though the pituitary gland is gone, you can see part of the infundibulum. See, that's, that's part of it, that little tube. And then so you can see it's a hollow tube that it leads into the pituitary gland, but it's snapped off and they pulled off the pituitary gland. So that's the infundibulum. 
Then we have our mammillary body. Well done. This is a cranial nerve. I can't remember which one it is. Oh, hold on, I'll tell you. It is the oculomotor nerve right here below the mammillary body. Not one you have to worry about identifying though. Okay, so you see your peduncles really well. Pons, medulla oblongata. Let's see. That's a nice cerebellum. It's pretty good. I know these brains are mushy. See how they cleaned that? You can see a nice sulcus and the bumps of the gyrus. Let's look at our longitudinal fissure here. Yeah, that looks good. A little bit. You know, they're mushy. You can't help it. So the longitudinal fissure is pretty deep. So to see, sorry, I've got to turn around to face you. To see the rest of the structures internally, we are going to make a cut, and it's going to be right down the middle. So a mid-sagittal cut with our scalpel. Now, when you do this, it needs to be long, smooth cuts, and I'll show you what I mean. No sawing motions. So I'm going to move them to the side to make it easier for me here. And so what I like to do is I kind of, you know, you've already kind of separated your longitudinal fissure. Let's make sure this guy's separated as far as he can go. Yeah, oh, you guys did a good job. So see how you probe to make sure everything's there. Then I use my hand, kind of hold it open so I can see that line because it's perfect. And then I'm going to just make a long, smooth motion. It's not going to go all the way through the first time. Do not make sawing motions, okay? You're going to go all the way through. And then you hold it open to see. It's kind of hard for me to see it, but that's cool. You know what I mean. Hold it open and continue along that same incision. Try to get it right along the middle as best you can. And the reason we want to try to get it in the middle is, well, you'll see soon enough. Try to keep your fingers out of the way. Okay. Long, smooth cuts are going to get the best result. And then just hold it open. And do that again. I'm not doing it perfectly because I'm looking through the screen instead of the brain. Okay. Ah, it could have been worse. All right, so I'll give you guys a minute to do that. Just do your best. You know, it's not going to be perfect. That's okay. And then we'll talk about the internal structures, okay? Okay, internal structures. So I was able to bisect that one that had the pituitary gland and it's still slightly attached. So you can see pituitary gland sits below. See, tilted upwards. It's just barely attached there. There's the pituitary gland. Okay. And I am loving this one. It has some really great structures that we can see that are necessary. So first of all, you see this? Oh, let me move that out of the way. Okay. You should all see the, a white kind of band in the middle. And you, there might be a membrane on it. depends on how you cut it. Um, but if there is, you can just gently poke through with your probe. Inside, if you kind of look with your probe gently, it's hollow. That's your lateral ventricle, okay? The white band surrounding it, this is the corpus callosum. This is, the whole thing is white matter, so myelinated nerve fibers that connect the right and left hemisphere of the brain so they can communicate with each other. It's pretty cool. So on either side, you have a lateral ventricle. It has a little membrane in between that separates the two lateral ventricles from the right and the left side. Okay, so you have cerebral spinal fluid in there. Below the lateral ventricle, there is this space. So you see a nice circle. So first of all, we're going to identify that circle. It's a thalamus, or your book might call it, what is it, the intermediate mass of the thalamus or something. 
but simply enough, we're just, it's the thalamus, okay? The round portion here, this round structure is the thalamus. So above the thalamus, we also have this kind of little cavity. That's your third ventricle. And in there, depending on your brain, if you kind of just gently use your probe, you might find some blood vessels in there. If you do, I can see them, they're not coming out of mine. But this is where, one of the places you'll find the choroid plexus, which is the structures that make the cerebral spinal fluid. They're found within the third ventricle. Okay, so we have our corpus callosum, our lateral ventricle within. Below the lateral ventricle, we have our third ventricle. So third ventricle sits on top of our thalamus. Notice, okay, see this little guy here? That's the pineal gland. And so when we looked at the brain, let's see, when we held it this way and looked inside, remember that? We can't see it on this guy because he's not cleaned as well as the other one. When you bent it down to look inside to see the pineal gland, if you were lucky enough to, I'm so lucky, I'm just telling you. If you were lucky enough and you bisected the actual pineal gland, you can see it. So it sits right behind the thalamus. So this is the pineal gland, makes melatonin, okay? And even cooler, I'm very, very happy with this. So we see our third ventricle. If, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. Okay. See, we have a little channel right here that goes all the way down behind the cerebellum. That's the cerebral aqueduct. So it drains fluid there's inside here, from the lateral ventricle, third ventricle, here's the channel right here, goes down, all the way down to behind our cerebellum. So at the base of the cerebellum is where we find our fourth ventricle. So if you had a pin stuck right here, that would be for your fourth ventricle. See that lovely cerebral aqueduct? Nice little channel for your cerebral spinal fluid. It's really quite nice. Over here we have our cerebellum, and this is a really good, this is a good brain. Um, you see the white structure here, and it has branches, and it branches and branches and branches. The white structure is called the arbor vitae, and that translates as the tree of life, which is kind of cool. And then you can, can, you can see the darker matter around it. If you look closely at yours, you can see that it's folded, just like the cerebral cortex is folded. The dark matter that's folded around the arbor vitae is your cerebellar cortex. Yeah. So, I mean, if I put a pin in the white portion, like clearly in the white, you know it's the arbor vitae. If I do my best to get it in the gray section or the darker section, you know that's for the cerebellar cortex. And just like quizzes before, I'll give you clues like, do I want like the region of the brain or this little tiny structure? I will try to make sure to give you clues as to like what exactly I'm looking for. And of course in quizzes, if you're not sure, you can always ask for clarification, okay? Um, <clears throat> so back over here, here's our pineal gland. Remember before when you, you bent the brain stem so you could see the superior and inferior colliculi? You, from the side view, from a bisected brain, so right behind the pineal gland, this big bump here, that's your superior colliculi. The little bump below, this dude, that's your inferior colliculi. Okay? Now, I'm keeping this pineal, this, this pituitary gland. See how it's still attached? You see that little tiny tube? That's the infundibulum. This is like the first time in I don't know how many years it's remained attached. I'm so excited. So this is neat that you guys can see that, that little tube, it's actually longer. And then we have our pituitary. The pituitary is actually divided into two sections. The biggest portion is your anterior pituitary and you see that line. The back portion is the posterior pituitary. Um, now the infundibulum, connects the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus doesn't have a clear, distinct structure. We can say, oh, that round thing, no. So the round structure is the thalamus. What does hypo mean? Below. So the hypothalamus is going to be below the 
the thalamus. So it's literally the region right below the thalamus, and it's going to be between the thalamus and where that opening for the infundibulum is. So it's, it's kind of nondescript. It's a region, okay? It's not a structure that's easy to ID. It's just a region. So, for example, if you're looking at a half brain like this and there's a pin stuck kind of in the middle below the thalamus, that's going to refer to the hypothalamus, okay? Because that's the region below the thalamus. Okay, um, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the pineal gland, these are all structures that are part of the midbrain. Okay, and that, that's listed on your brain stem portion. And I'm going to check to make sure we've gotten everything else. Um, chiasm, hypothalamus, thalamus. Okay, I think we've gone over all of the structures that you will need to know for your quiz next week. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. It will be real. They'll be real brains. I'm going to save this one because it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So they'll be real brains with real pins in them. You'll you can wear gloves. You can touch things so that you know you can clearly identify them. Okay. So 